Guys, welcome to the I Love Seville Show. My name is Jerry Miller. It's great to be with you on a Monday. Happy Monday to everyone. We are live in Charlottesville, Albemarle County, Central Virginia, the Commonwealth, the country, and the world. We're live on the I Love Seville Network. I'm excited for today's program. Wild Rock, two fantastic people from Wild Rock, a nonprofit in our community, are here to showcase and spotlight their organization. The Wild Rock mission is to promote nature play for health and happiness. It's a nature play space outside of Seaville where visitors experience the joys of playing and learning in nature in a safe space. We're going to showcase the evolution of the brand here on the I Love Seaville show with Kat Warner and uh, Paige Lindbaum. Yes. Um, they're going to join us in T minus 30 seconds to uh, just be evangelists of this great nonprofit in our community, one of the many. Before we go anywhere, let's thank some of our clients. We are an advertising agency here at I Love Seville and at VMV Brands. And on the first and second floors of the Macklin Building, our team represents about 113 clients up and down the eastern seaboard. We just love what we do. Um, I think like Kat and Paige, when you make your passion, your profession, you don't work a day in your life. Now, some days are easier than others, but this is absolutely my passion. Um, and I love working alongside clients like Interstate Pest and Service Companies. If you see anything that interfaces with the market from radio, TV, print, social, photo, video, it starts on the first and second floor of the Macklin Building, a business that started in 1969 with the first generation who used his personal pickup truck, Mr. Robert Wells, in a dream to build a company. And today, the business has four generations of locally owned family um, working within the company, almost 100 team members in a Commonwealth-wide working footprint. We've also grown firsthand over the last, the biz, our business, 11 years. But uh, Dr. Wagner, we've worked along him at Scott Wagner Chiropractic for eight years. And any branding or TV or radio you see in the, the marketplace originates in the Macklin building as well. Dr. Wagner, thank you so much for uh, being on our client roster. Now, Judah is our team <coughs> member. He's worked alongside me for eight years. I joke often that we have a love-hate relationship. I love him. Sometimes he may hate me, but I'll tell you what, we will go to war for each other no matter what. One of our key team members here. Um, 12 Facebook pages you're watching this show. If you'd like to offer some perspective, just put it in the comment section, and I will relay it to the ladies. Judah, why don't we go to the studio cam and welcome Paige. Hello, Paige. Hi. Um, and Kat, hello. Hi, Jerry. Thanks for having us. Our pleasure. Thank you for suggesting this. <laughs> you're welcome. Um, it certainly fits our mission. I will get out of the way and start with the same question we ask everybody. Paige, what are you all about? Um, the passions, <laughs> the hobbies, and the interests. Who is Paige? Uh, well, I am a former preschool director and a preschool teacher. I'm a preschool special educator. Um, and I am the community outreach director for Wild Rock. I love children. Um, I love being outside. I like um, running on trails. I have two sons, Caden and Carter, and a husband, Sam. And um, we just love uh, living in Charlottesville. We love the natural spaces here and uh, just being near the Blue Ridge. Um, and uh, I'll hand it to Kat. Okay. Well, let me, <laughs> before we hand it to Kat, let me ask a follow-up. Uh, sure. um, ties to Charlottesville. What is it about you love, what you love about the community and how long you've been here? Yeah, so uh, we have lived here on and off for 20 years. Um, and uh, I love, it's a great place to raise children. Um, there are so many community-minded people here and so many people who want to make Charlottesville a great place. Um, I love, like I said earlier, I love the green spaces here. Love going out into the trail systems. Um, my favorite trail here is Pretty Creek. Oh, I love Pretty Creek. Yeah, it was there yesterday. It's pretty um, muddy, but it's just a gorgeous place. And the loop, the Pretty Creek loop, is an exact 5K. So if you run, you know how how far you've run. So I really like it, I like uh, that park. And uh, I love going to Shenandoah National Park. I really, really love the area that Wild Rock's in, um, out at Blackwell's Hollow, kind of near Sugar Hollow, out um, on the Greene County side of Albemarle. Um, you're getting props already on the program. Uh, we're going to relay some of that commentary. And Kat, so are you. Um, Carolyn Schuler. Skyler. Hello, Skyler. Our sorry. director. Carolyn, what's up? Um, hello, director. I'm sorry I messed up your last name. James Watson, Glenn Harrop, Ron Gantz, Julian Freeman from Peloton watching right now. Uh, let's see here. Kat, Jack Stewart, Jonty. 
Uh -huh. uh, nope. Let's go, cat. Can't wait to see you on the show. Your girl is famous, Alex Stewart Johnson. Um, Alisa Wentz says, yay, Cat Warner. Love you, love you. Um, same question for you. <laughs> Who is Cat? What are you all about? Um, so I've been in Charlottesville for a little bit over three years now, and Wild Rock is actually what brought me to Charlottesville. I, I, met, I met Carolyn um, before I came down here at a conference, and I had just finished serving with AmeriCorps and had no idea what I was going to do with my life, <laughs> and just came down here to like volunteer with her, and I actually ended up getting a job at Rockfish Wildlife Sanctuary, so I had been doing that while she had kind of still been getting Wild Rock started, and then once I decided I wanted to do more education rather than wildlife rehab, um, Carol and I had a conversation, and she had a part-time position open, so that's how I started officially working there, and then I work at Peloton Station as well. So I have two pretty great jobs. <laughs> um, this community you love, Mm -hmm. um, I know you like uh, the outdoors yeah. and music and good food and spots for you and your pup. Um, I may have stolen the answer from you, but what is it about <laughs> Charlottesville that you love, Kat? Yeah, you definitely named it. Like Paige said, there's so many great places um, to be outside, so many trails, and my favorite thing to do is definitely take my dog on trails. So we've been going to O'Hill a lot recently, which love is O'Hill. Yeah, a really fun spot. Um, but yeah, really, uh, anyone who knows me knows how much I'm obsessed with her. So anytime I can do something with her, it's pretty much what I'm doing when I'm not working. Um, your director, Carolyn, says you guys are a dream team doing amazing work for the community. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Carolyn. Any comments you want to relay to the ladies, and they are coming in. Um, I will pass them along. All right, why don't I get out of the way? Wild Rock, give us a snapshot. Yes. What's it all about? So Wild Rock has an amazing story. Carolyn Schuyler, who's writing, who's uh, writing in right now, uh, is our executive director. Carolyn won the Tom Tom Pitch Night with Wild Rock in cool. 2015. Um, after that, she did uh, the uh, Darden iLab incubator with Wild Rock, and then it opened up in 2017. We're actually relatively new, um, and. Uh, so Wild Rock is um, a nature play center in Crozet. Uh, we have about 28 acres um, that is designed for people to come out and enjoy nature. It's in direct response to um, sort of a public health crisis now. Uh, people read a lot about it, nature deficit disorder, but um, we're becoming more of an urban species and people are not going outside like they used to and that's having really detrimental effects to mental health, to development, um, to early childhood development in particular. And um, also, you know, it's our intention to create stewards so that we can work on, you know, all of the environmental issues that are plaguing our country and world right now. We want people to be really invested in that. So we're sort of marrying the two. We're working on mental health and also on that environmental factor. Um, so Wild Rock is a place you can come um, to enjoy a day or have a field trip with a school um, or have a retreat with a company. And uh, our nature playscape is designed for everyone who, you know, from those who are very comfortable outside to those who really aren't comfortable outside at all. We have three acres of fenced-in space that's called our nature playscape, and it's just different play elements. And add anything you want, Kat. Um, and then we have this amazing um, interior space um, in our barn that children and adults can just enjoy different... We have sensory tables and fairy house building, and that's where our animals reside. And um, so then we have a trail system that is, um, you know, gorgeous, uh, going up a mountain and ending at a beautiful large rock, which is our wild rock. Um, and uh, so we have a lot of exciting things happening out there all the time. Um, we served around 16,600 people last year. Wow. Yeah. That's impressive. Yes. So not just at our playscape, but we have a really robust urban outreach program. And that's one of the things that I'm sort of... So that's like the John Paul Jones Arena. If you put <laughs> the full attendance of the John Paul Jones Arena during a men's basketball game, that's how many you really? serve in a one year. That's impressive. That's I'm trying to so make it cool. tangible. 
yeah. um, for people that are watching. That's a lot. That's really amazing. I didn't know that. But yeah. um, yes, and uh, we love going out in the community. So we are working, you know, with a variety of nonprofits in Charlottesville. Uh, we love working with the Boys and Girls Club. We bring nature play um, to their club, to the different clubs. We have a program in Southwood and a program at, at Cherry Ave. Cool. Um, and we bring our nature play to them. So sometimes it's not possible to bring a big group of children, you know, after school out to Crozet. So sure. we are very open to bringing it into town. Some of um, our in-town neighborhoods may not have great green spaces. So we want to just provide that nature play opportunity for those children. Um, we work also with City of Promise. We work with, um, we've worked with Crescendo Juntos, um, with International Neighbors, with Abundant Life. Um, there's so many amazing nonprofits in this town that we love to partner with. And honestly, Wild Rock wouldn't be what it was without our partnerships and all the people that have helped us you know, since 2017, actually to, since 2015 to get started. Um, but And then Kat has an amazing program that she's bringing into school systems where she's bringing animals in because what we were noticing is animals are, in children's literature, they're all over their clothes and, you know, the things in their home. And there are pictures of animals everywhere, but a lot of children have never really seen a a live animal, really? save for the squirrel that they might see outside of their sure. house. And so I had the privilege of observing Kat do a program at Clark Elementary recently, and it was just amazing. The children were so respectful of the animals, and we were working with three-year-olds, yeah. and they were so amazing, and they were so engaged. And Kat had a variety of activities that not only helped them connect with animals, which we know helps children um, develop empathy, but also makes them stewards and helps them understand how important our, you know, our wildlife is and how we have to protect it. So um, that is just a, a little sample of all the things we do in the community. Um, I feel like we're out and about all the time, just providing either nature play, animal programs, or schools are coming to our nature playscape. Um, we have an amazing partnership with Charlottesville City Schools. Um, we are there all the time. I do I actually do a program with the preschools called um, uh, Nature Friends. And cool. I go to the preschools uh, a couple of times in the fall and a couple of times in the spring. And then they also come to the, our playscape a couple of times. And I feel like Charlottesville City Schools has a real vested interest in social emotional health in their students. And um, we're part of that. So that's a real honor. Um, you guys are getting a lot of props, so I'm going to ask about your <laughs> program here. Um, before I do, let me relay some props from the viewers. Um, Megan Eady, um, Paige, <laughs> you rock. Wild Rock is the best. So many good things happening at Wild Rock. Um, Franklin Clock, yeah. Ike Cat from CCEEC. <laughs> Um, Julian, of course, is saying, Brindle, Brindle, Brindle. That's the name of your dog, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Um, they are a dream team doing amazing work. Again, Caroline, put that in the feed. Thank you for watching, Caroline. Bobby Castine says hello. Jill Strain, Paige is the absolute sweetest. Um, watching <laughs> right now, Brandy Lee, Laura Page, um, Jill Watt watching. Um, Andrew Silver is watching in Austin, Texas. We'd like to give a shout out to Jill. She works with us as well, Rick, as Jill well. Jill is amazing. Nice. She works at our playscape, and we love her. Jillian dancing john wilson watching right now heather chandler um ashley Mario, woot woot cat best friend alert <laughs> alex says go cat look at you girl um all right why don't i get out of the way here you have four states richmond virginia and northern virginia watching along with central virginia um talk to us about your program in the schools because i was kind of taken aback to know um, what Paige just said, that a lot of the students have never actually seen an animal in real life. And there's certainly something different with seeing an animal on this screen or on a book right. or hearing about an animal in a story, right. but then actually holding one or seeing one in person. Throw that to you. Yeah, that's a big part of what we want to incorporate in the program is for kids to not only be able to see these animals, but really have um, a close relationship, like meeting them. So part of what the program, what I do is I uh, we have four education animals at Wild Rock. So we have a corn snake, a box turtle who is here. Right today. here. Yep, yep. Yeah. Shout out to Levi. Um, a domestic rabbit that we use to teach kids about eastern cottontails. And then recently we just adopted a hedgehog. So all of those animals 
you know, besides the rabbit as well, would be native to Virginia. So that's a big thing that we're trying to teach the kids about is native species. But the hedgehog was something that just was unique that we could teach kids about other animals using a hedgehog, talk about their habitats related to similar animals that live in Charlottesville. And really, I think one of the big things too is even if we're not, even if not all the animals are native, just exposing kids to these animals and talking about their habitats outside and talking about, you know, their needs and what these kids can do. They're young, but once, if the kids start to develop um, a respect and a relationship for these animals, understand, you know, I'm teaching them basic things like turtle, when you see a turtle on the road, what do you do? Like things that they're probably going to encounter that they can actually have an effect on. You get out of the car and help the turtle across the street. <laughs> right, but right? you have to, you have to, so if the turtle's walking, actually I'll just, I'll pull you yes, out. Yes, please. All right, we'll just, I love props. <laughs> we'll jump into this. It's like show and tell right here. <laughs> She's such a good girl. Too. Yes. She always, yeah. she always performs. I mean, to be honest, yeah. <laughs> I was, I was a little nervous about coming here today and then when and I realized I was bringing Levi, like, made me feel less nervous. Nice. Right. So, I you know I think about how, like, kids can relate to that. That just this having. This is Levi. Yes, this is Levi. Okay. Right, and Judah, give us some instructions here of yeah, how we should we hold should. Levi. Okay, right in front. There we go. I'm not going to put her down because she's pretty fast. She's really fast. Despite what people think about turtles, but. Um, <laughs> So yeah, if a turtle, I think a lot of people think that they should relocate the turtle to a safer place. So maybe you're helping it cross the road, but then you're like, well, there's not a lot of area here for the turtle to live. And then they move it closer to their house. But that is like the most detrimental thing you can do for box oh, no. turtles. They have a really small radius of where they live their whole life. So if I would release Levi here, not knowing where she... I was originally from. On this the is, downtown mall. Yeah, not a safe spot, regardless. Um, but she would spend the rest of her life trying to get home. So they have a really strong, you know, I call it like an internal GPS system, and they just want to get back there. Okay. Um, so a lot of people think, you know, they're doing the right thing when in reality not. But, you know, with crossing the road, a lot of times people think, well, it doesn't look safe over there, so I'll just move it back the other way. And they're so stubborn that if, I, you know, if you move Levi this way, or... You know, she's going this way, and then you move her back this way. She's just going to get right back into the road. Really? So it's always, you always, even if you're, you know, don't think it's a great spot, always move them across because they're just going to go right back, and then they're... Where's in. Levi going? Well, nowhere now. <laughs> well, if <laughs> Levi was crossing the road. Oh, where, oh in the wild. Yeah. Um, well, probably to, for, you know, mating, to lay eggs, to, there may be a water source or food in that area, so they know what they're doing. I have turned the turtle around so many times. Oh, I'm really? Around. Like, I will yeah. stop the car and get out of the car. Uh -huh. I love, love, love animals. Yeah. But I always think, and I make the mistake, I'm like, this isn't a good spot where you're going. Mm -hmm. Like, I know more than the turtle itself. Right. But I don't. Right, yeah. Good advice. Yeah, so that's a big one. And I, and I feel like a lot of the things I did as a kid, I thought I was helping, and I really wasn't. So just those little tricks that I can teach them make such a big difference. Because especially box turtles, their population in Virginia has been declining. Um, so they're a crucial species that we want to keep around. Cool. Pam Garrison, um, the fabulous, fabulous um, rock star DJ from uh, Country 99.7. WCYK is watching right now and giving you guys some props. Jill Watts says, I absolutely love Levi. Um, <laughs> Levi's quite a celebrity. Larry Serio's <laughs> watching. Sandy Fuel. We have folks in Charlotte, North Carolina watching. Okay, throw this to you. You... Um, um, got me thinking and, and remind me of the phrase you used. Um, was it um, outside the deficient? What was the, the Nature term? deficit disorder. Nature deficit yes. disorder. Yes. Um, these iPhones that you have my, in my screen, on my hand, yes. are absolutely ubiquitous now. They are undoubtedly a drug addiction. Yes. The average person is checking Facebook 17 times a day. Mm -hmm. The average person is checking Instagram even more than that. I get the updates at the end of the week of like screen time usage. Right. And I'm like a, a gross amount. <laughs> yeah. Like a gross amount. Right. I won't, I'm embarrassed to even say it. Like six, seven, eight hours a day. Yeah. And that's part of what we do here. So that's why it's skewed, but still it's obscene. Um, nature deficit disorder. Yes. I'll get out of the way. Sure. So let me tell you what you can do. Okay, please. So everybody uses screens, and we are certainly not here to say that's the wrong thing. What we're here to say is you can do something to help yourself when you get very, very involved with your screens, um, it, and that's go outside. It's free, and it's available to you. Um, just going outside and being near plants can lower your blood pressure. Sometimes I'll just take a walk down to my mailbox 
and I'll come back with a new perspective. You know, some, if, if you're doing a lot of work on your computer. Um, when we look at children, um, it's co quite concerning uh, because we feel like we're seeing sort of like, I may have said this earlier, but a mass indoor migration with children for a variety of reasons. Um, and What are some of those reasons? Some of those reasons are people- I have a 22 month old. Great, well people don't feel safe. Right. Um, there might not be a great green space around you. Um, people aren't screens or doing other things. Um, and then they're in school. You know, and in school, they're probably going to get outside maybe once or twice a day, which is awesome. Um, but what studies are showing is that children are spending sometimes seven hours a day on screens and maybe seven minutes outside. Get out. Yeah, so we want to make sure that we are providing this this access to outside, and that is our whole mission, and it really is an access issue, and there are a lot of kids out there that just don't have access to the out, to outside spaces, and there are a lot of children out there that do, um, and that's amazing, but we, we are really focused on the ones that don't, and um, we want to make sure that we're bringing that uh, wherever it needs to be, and also encouraging it through our facility out in Crozet, through our nature playscape, coming out, spending a Saturday out there with your family. We are about to um, open for the public in March again, and we're open on Saturdays for public days from 10 to 3, and you can go on wildrock.org and make a reservation. And um, it's, it's a very inexpensive day out. We are donation only we have a suggested donation of uh, ten to twenty five thirty dollars, mm -hmm. and so per car, and so we just encourage people to make the drive out there and um, just enjoy the day with your family. Being outside, it can really reset you. Um, but we are seeing, you know, because we're wired to go outside and play outside as children, and we're not doing that, we're seeing some differences. Like there's increases in sensory disorders in behavior disorders, um, and mental health issues. We live in a world full of toxic stress, so how do we teach our children to deal with that? And one of the easiest ways is to teach them to go outside and just sort of enjoy time off of electronics and playing outside, hopefully pretending. All these things we did when we were, I mean, when you were little, did you have no. that experience no. where you went outside and pretended? Or No, when I was little, didn't... my parents were like, here's a soccer ball, here's a baseball bat. Here's some tennis shoes. Go outside. Right. Don't come in until like dinner. Yeah. We and had like, the same thing. And part of that was because my brother and I drove my mom absolutely crazy. <laughs> yeah. And we were horrible, horrible children. Right. Um, and we were outside. <laughs> but no, you're right. We just spent time outside. We weren't even allowed to play video games. And now I think about, so you have two boys. Yes. Uh, now I think about our son and like, um, you know, he, he is amazing. But sometimes we just like, and he's 22 months. Sometimes we're just like, all right, let's turn PBS on. Yeah. On like the um, the iPad. Sure. And just get like a little peace of mind. Sure. You know, and granted, he's not going to be going outside right now as a 22-month-old. Mm -hmm. yeah. But at the same time, I can see how like we could fall victim, go throw this to you, fall victim of like the, uh, the, like the pitfall or like the cave or like the black hole that is like technology, like just being like this outlet to like breed short-term good behavior for a child that may be like anxious or like acting up in a restaurant or something. Right. Um, what do you think? Well, I think another thing to add off of what Paige was saying is a big part of our field trips is we combine an, you know, environmental education piece, but a, like our place or our field trips always involve an aspect of free play. So not only are the kids coming out and they're immersed in nature and we're doing hikes with them, we're learning about rocks or trees or, you know, we kind of, we try to align our field trips with the SOL so that schools can come out and it also be beneficial to what they're tying into what they're doing at school. But then also a lot of times the teachers come out and they wish that the kids could have just been on the playscape the whole time because the education piece was great but these kids I you know they don't get a lot of outside time and just being able to have this open safe space where they can run around and use their imagination and learn by you know doing things like we have a pond or a, a creek that runs through and so there's often animals in there that they can interact with and um, forget where I was going with that. But basically, um, yeah, the, the aspect of free play, ho we hope that kids take things that they're doing, you know, at Wild Rock and then 
bringing that home and doing those types of things outside in their own neighborhoods too. One of, one of the things, I'm going to throw this to you, Paige, mm -hmm. and we have a lot of people watching. I'm going to relay some comments to you guys. Um, our buddy Curtis, this cat, <laughs> he's watching right now. My uh, boss. <laughs> yeah. Um, Connie Case Horan, am I saying her name? Connie. S yeah, such important work you guys are doing. So proud to call you guys friends and have Wild Rock as a resource in our community. Chaz Hardy, Paige is a sweetheart. Um, <laughs> Give it a like and a share on any of the streams that you guys are watching, and I will pass it along. Um, we're hearing a lot more about um, emotional intelligence mm -hmm. and EQ. Um, for me, and this is just kind of the unfortunate aspect of being, ooh, Levi saying hello. <laughs> um, one of the unfortunate aspects of being like um, a small business owner and you know, someone that has to like, you know, is helping provide for uh, a wife and a child is I'm so razor focused on like what happens in this building and our clients that I often like do not put as much importance on EQ. And I think it's like causing a trickle over effect to like how I go about things potentially with my son. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to throw this to you. What is the correlation with developing like a good EQ foundation and base, base and growth mm -hmm. potential with being outside and amongst nature and what Wild Rock is doing. Sure, so um, pretending outside is something that we're wired to do. Um, so it, what you're doing, when your child is playing outside, he or she is, um, you know, pretending and solving problems and, doing all kinds of things that might be a little bit risky, like walking on a log or climbing something and jumping off. All of these things are really good for development. And so far as emotional intelligence or social emotional health and development, we're looking at you know, being able to get along with friends, being outside with friends, making a fort together, cooperating, waiting in that stream that Kat was referencing, you know, staying upright in the stream and maybe helping a friend um, catch fish. We're working together, and those are all things. So in order to, to develop your social-emotional skills, you have to practice them. Children don't come out just knowing them. And being outside is a great way to practice them, and it's a way that I think we're biologically wired to do. Like, I think it works so well for children. It also is a big stress reliever, and, you know, children are really overscheduled these days, um, and, and I get it, um, because there's so much available, especially in this town, for children after school or even preschool age children. There's classes everywhere and all well, kinds and of Well, and a tired little boy is a good little boy. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so getting them out of the house <laughs> means daddy keeps a little bit of sanity. <laughs> yes. And, um, you know, getting children around other children is fantastic. Yeah. Getting them around other children outside to play is double fantastic. And then, um, you know, getting them into a space that's maybe not a playground that's just um, metal equipment is even better. So being able to explore in a stream or um, go and turn over rocks and see what's under there and all of those things that sort of we remember as children, those are things that are super valuable to development, all aspects of development, fine motor, gross motor, cognitive, social, emotional, it's all there. And it's outside. And so that, that's your answer right now. Take, take your son outside. Help have play dates with other friends just out in the yard. Um, get some boxes and see what they can do when he's big enough. Yeah. See what he can make out of them. Those are the simple, those simple things are incredible for development. I'd never even given this some thought. And, and you guys are really opening my mind here. Kat, throw this to you. And Coco is giving you some props. Emily Ellis watching the program <laughs> and liking what she's hearing right now. Can you give us some like, in advertising, uh, we call it a POP, a proof of performance. It's an acronym. Uh, and basically it's like a tangible positive result. Okay. Um, without naming any names from the kids, but like maybe some firsthand perspective of like you working alongside some kids and how you've seen them yeah. grow firsthand through Wild Rock and its mission. So, I have one. Yeah. Do you want to give Remember yours? They didn't when you were at the school the other day and they oh. all wanted to scream. Yeah. And well, all you had to do was tell them it wasn't good for Leche. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that's a great one. Um, mm -hmm. When I did one of the programs with the animals, there's you made me think of another thing, but the okay. first thing was... Um, 
you know, explaining to the kids, like, their voices were going to get really high because I'm bringing out a live animal and it's exciting, but just teaching them how the rabbits have really long ears and so they are hearing so much louder than we are. I mean, every kid was silent. And a lot of times, too, like, I bring the, like, with the rabbit, I bring him, put him in the center of the kids and... Some kids are not, they've never been around an animal before. I mean, not even a pet. And so this is very, you know, can be very scary, even though Mm -hmm. it's a cute little rabbit, they have no idea. And usually by the end of my program, even with the snake and the turtle, like I pretty much can get every kid to, I, you know, I teach them the proper way to pet the animal and I pretty much can get every kid to give it a chance. And the snake one is always like, you know, because people have such a, (laughs) you know, misconception about Uh snakes. And yes, there are snakes that are venomous. We have to be careful with snakes, but we shouldn't just automatically see a snake, think fear, think that we want to get rid of it. Because if they're living by your house, it's probably a good thing. You probably won't have a rodent problem. So they're, you know, they provide so much for the environment. We don't give them enough credit, but I kind of went on a tangent Um, for your question there. But basically, you know, kind of seeing that, I think what that ties into is building resilience. So you're afraid of something or you're not going to try something and then you try it, maybe you fail at it. Like when kids are outside and they're doing an activity, you know, they're going to get bruised, they're going to get cut and, but not being afraid of that happening to continue to do it and see like, this is just going to make yeah. me stronger for the next time I attempt I fell this. down I'm, and yeah. I'm fine. I'm okay. And I, my fort fell down, but I can rebuild it. Right. You know, those are things that are skills that sometimes are hard for kids, especially if they haven't had time to practice them. And it's all about practice. No one's born knowing how to do all these things. Yeah. So. We'll thank some of the folks watching. Our friend Jason Boofy Johnson is watching. Uh, Kat, you are going to love this. Uh, is it Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania? Yeah. Where you're from? Yeah. Oh. They're watching right now. Mechanicsburg, oh. PA. What up, what up? Mike <laughs> De Temple says, go, Kat. Your mom says, I'm so proud of you. Oh. Um, kitty cat. Um, <laughs> give it a like and a share on any of the streams that you're watching. Um, I'm going to thank some of the folks on your page. Um, I may have mentioned Laura Page. Joanne Norford says hello. Oh. Mary Kay Campbell. <laughs> Chris Garrison, John Walker, um, Claire Chantel, um, the list goes on here. If you'd like to relay any commentary in the stream, I will pass it along to the ladies. Um, so Tim, who's watching in Crozet, says, I love the interview, Jerry. How can we get involved and support Wild Rock in their mission? We love to have volunteers. Um, we have so many volunteer opportunities at Wild Rock, mm-hmm. so we would love to um, unique opportunity, unique experiences. Fun. There's, you know, yes. you, oh, you don't even for fun. Open up the checkbook and donate. As well. <laughs> I mean, I was going to get to that. <laughs> always a good one. <laughs> you're not going to say no to that, right? I was going to get to that. Okay. Of course, we can always use financial, you know, donations. We have so much programming going on that we do rely on donors to fund those programs, and um, we appreciate every penny you know that we get yeah. um the more money that and that not all able- the schools that we want to serve can always have the funds for the kids exactly. to come so we constantly are searching for grant money to be able yeah. to help lower the cost for some of the schools that it's not as easy for them to come out to wild rock even just with the transportation piece well how does that right. work and give us some insight to that so clark is a perfect example mm-hmm. this is a charlottesville city school yes. um it's going to be difficult to mobilize say 10 to 30 students um, from Clark to Crozet. Mm -hmm. So you bring um, an aspect of the experience to them. Uh, How does the school get further involved, whether it's a city school, a county school, Mm -hmm. Louisa, Orange, Green, whatever Mm -hmm. it may be? And we do work with um, county schools as well um, and absolutely love our partnerships with them. yeah, I mean, they. we are booking field trips all spring. Um, we uh, love to have schools out for field trips. We think that's super valuable um, to get them off of the school grounds and get them out into nature. Um, but we also uh, love bringing it to them. Um, and there are some schools, for whatever reason, it's not possible for them to get out to Crozet. Um then we can do any number of programs for them. But typically, we're always going to encourage them, if it's a time of year that we're open, to come out first because we just think that's a more impactful experience for children. But um, like I said, actually, uh, many educators in town um, in both county and city schools are super um, committed to... Mm -hmm 
the idea that being in nature actually helps kids academically. Really? It helps their bodies to regulate. It helps them to be able to think. It helps with toxic stress. There are so many things that it does that help teachers. So I think teachers are saying, wow, you know, this, this is actually valuable to us. And um, so, and we love teachers and want to be as helpful as possible to them. Karen Eanes, great work you were doing there, Paige. I'm loving the interview. Um, thank you for <laughs> leaving you. that comment. Um, so it seems like here you guys have a phenomenal mission and a phenomenal organization. So it seems like the challenge for you guys is A, drive awareness for what you're doing, um, B, try to get the community involved from a volunteer donation standpoint mm -hmm. um, and also get the schools involved because if you can get the schools involved like Kat bringing Levi to the school, that will serve as kind of like an evangelist or a touch point for your acreage in Crozet. Exactly. Um, and the other challenge would be to show the tangible ROI or the tangible um, positives that are a byproduct of getting involved with Wild Rock. Sure. So if you can somehow snapshot all those right. and present them, then the donations are going to pick up, the volunteer hours are going to uptick, and you guys are going to have more resources to amplify your mission and what you're all about. Sure. Yeah, I mean, we always want people to know that... Um, that we're we're basically all over town, and I think people just think of us as a destination spot yeah. out in Crozet. It's hard to explain all yeah, that we do. It's like when so Paige much. gave that <laughs> intro, you know, I felt like she could have kept going for another ten minutes yes. because I mean, we really try to like hit all the points. So, you know, a lot of times when I'm trying to explain it to people, it, you know, there's so many aspects to it, but we are more than just like you know, a spot to come to on Saturday. Sometimes people come out for the public days and they don't realize that we do field trips and that we're involved in all the community things that we do. I would yeah. think, um, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, we, um, you can have a birthday party out at yeah. Wild Rock. We are about to launch an amazing summer camp program. So for everyone in Charlottesville who doesn't have a summer camp picked out, this is it. I mean, it's going to be amazing. We're going to have our animals there. So many different opportunities. Brindle will be there. Yes, yes. your dog. <laughs> yes, and, um, and Kat and I will both be there, and, and our um, co-worker, Jill, and um, our executive director, Carolyn, and we're just so excited about it. And so um, you can go to wildrock.org and find out about all that, all the programs we're offering, including the summer camp. Yeah, um, there's a couple different themes for our camps, too. So they're not just all animals. We have nature detectives, and then one is more about I think about hiking and mm -hmm. um, adventures. Yeah. Yeah. About, uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Um, so a lot of questions coming in. This is coming from a mom of three, Jessica Pasta White Pastermick. She asked this question and you've answered this a little bit. Hi, I'm just now tuning into the program. Is Wild Rock only for schools or can anyone go visit? Yes and yes. <laughs> uh, is there a website for information? Yes, wildrock.org. So yes. I'm going to tag and piggyback onto her questions and ask you a few more. How about the evolution of, is curriculum the right word? The evolution of your curriculum mm -hmm. or your programs or mm -hmm. what you offer as someone gets older? So, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure some of the curriculum would be good for this age group. Yes. How does it evolve and mature as your participants evolve and mature? Right. So, mm -hmm. we have a couple different programs that we do when schools come out for field trips. So, we do work with a lot of pre-K through second grade, but we love having the older kids out. I think the oldest, um, well, we've had high, we've even had high schoolers out, but as far as um, I think field trips I've done, I think sixth grade is the highest because I think that's where our SOLs mostly tie in is up to sixth grade. But um, it's really cool to see the older kids come out because they want to play too. I mean, we kind of have this idea that mm -hmm. we stop playing at a certain age and we start redirecting our focus to sports or more school-related things. Um, but when we see the older grades come out, I mean, they love it just as much. So our Playscape definitely encompasses you know, all ages in certain aspects because we have the hike and we have the indoor activities as well. Um, but a lot of our, if you go on and look at our field trip offerings, um, you can see what um, grade it's best designed for and we're always open to modifying a certain program like we did we have a rocks program that we teach kids about rocks and it ties into a curriculum but we worked with a school that had been learning it in an earlier grade so we kind of developed you know modified it for when they came so that we could do it with their group because they were really interested in it so we really try to make it um, our programs available to whatever age group wants to come and take advantage and we also have programming for adults nice. 
We have seniors out. Sometimes we um, work with um, veterans. veterans. Cool. Because love that. Yes, because that being outside again, it is an incredible way to combat. PTSD. Stress. Yes. Right. And so um, our, we have veterans. We serve all kinds of different um, schools and private schools in Charlottesville, like Virginia Institute of Autism comes out a couple of times a year. Um, so we're really trying to meet everybody where they are and with what they need. So if an organization calls us and says, you know, um, we really need a day for this. We can probably create that um, if it's in line with what we, you know, what's possible for us. And um, I know with Virginia Institute of Autism, they have the playscape all, all to themselves, which I think is fantastic. They can just run; that's fenced in, and the kids have so much fun. And that uh, we love our partnership with them. Um, but yes, uh, basically, we can go all the way through the age span. I mean, we want to do that, mm -hmm. um, and we are working on some really fun new um, programming that I'm not going to reveal yet. Ooh. For, um, for, <laughs> for middle school, I like that uh, little tease yeah. action right there. <laughs> So um, we had an amazing focus group a couple of nights ago, and we came up with some great ideas because we've had, like, Village School came out and did a pollinator project. And a lot of times what we see with the older kids is they're doing stewardship projects. And that is one of our um, big pushes is to get kids involved in the environment and, and caring about it. Um, I just actually just read this amazing thing that if you are stressed out about the environment, like if you're reading things about how bad the environment, like what kind of shape the environment's in, going outside actually helps it to relieve your anxiety, Makes just sense. like spending time in it. Um, but having that investment in children is really important, but it's also important to continue it up through middle and high school. And um, so that's important to us to 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 give that opportunity to kids who want it. Jason Whitehead has given you props. He says, hi, Paige, you're doing <laughs> a great Jason. job. Ashley Schneider, we need more pages in the world. <laughs> um, Karen Eanes, great work you guys are doing um, for the community, both of you. Um, more questions coming in. Ben Hernandez, the musician, welcome to the show. Um, I'll throw this to you guys. So social norms um, almost are like influencing us to spend more time with this, which I'm holding a MacBook here, <laughs> and this, I'm holding my iPhone, especially as we get older. And I almost see like curriculums in schools, and I'm not marginalizing any school curriculums mm -hmm. by any means, but I'm seeing curriculums in schools emphasizing learning where students are, meaning that they're putting the educational materials on te technological mm -hmm. devices Mm -hmm. um, because that's where they're spending their time, which is further, seems to me, and I'm a dummy, you guys are the pros, it seems to be further reinforcing the attachment to technology sure. as opposed to encouraging getting outside of the classroom. Mm -hmm. How and, you know, how do you <laughs> combat that right there? That is a very macro question. I mean, I, you go outside. Like, you have to intentionally do it. And... Um, and I think that that's the challenge. You have to disengage. You have to make some parameters for yourself, for your family, um, for your classroom, whatever. Um, I, I totally agree. My son that's in college, that he, almost all of his textbooks are online now. Um, so they don't even look at books. Wow. And, you know, I miss sometimes, like, I know a lot of people I miss love, magazines. Yes. Or like newsprint. Yes. I used to read the back of the yeah. shampoo bottle. Yes. You know? <laughs> and now, now everything is... Is this. Yeah. Right. You know? Right, and so you have to be intentional about going outside, and I think as a parent, you have to be intentional about exposing your children to lots of different opportunities to go outside, whether it be coming to Wild Rock, um, you know, or engaging in one of our programs, or just going on a hike. Um, that's, that's just a choice. And so I think you have to make a choice not to let these devices, they, we have to have them for our work. I mean, we work it in nature, Play yeah, center and we, and we use them there. all the time. We, computer, you know, we're we not have saying, to. Yeah. Um, we have to take <laughs> reservations on them. We have to take emails from teachers. Like We have to use them, but um, we also need to make an intentional choice to go outside every day and not just to walk to your car. Because um, I do hear that from kids. We ask kids a lot in our groups, like, how much did you go outside this week? When did you go outside? And sometimes they'll say, well, we just went 
to our car. <laughs> I went outside. Car? <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, I don't know how accurate that is. Well, still, I mean, it may be <laughs> but, accurate. But clearly that's the, the most, you know, that's yeah. what they remembered the most. So <laughs> Exactly. And so that, you know, that tells us a little something. We do try to take a lot of data on our work and, and see what's working and what isn't. We're well, still like data. growing. Yeah, we're still a growing organization. And so we have all kinds of things that we do out in our groups and at the Playscape where we're we're asking kids a lot of questions. How much were you outside? How important is it to you to be outside? Are you scared outside? Do you feel good outside? You know, all of these questions are important for us to know. We want to meet them where they are. We never want to be like, well, gosh, you know, you're a lot, you know, you're, you've lost the opportunity to do this. We want to make sure that we understand why they're not going outside. And we do that with no judgment. Yeah. Because everybody's in a different situation, everybody's in a different neighborhood. Um, and you know, we want to just be the, the helpers in the situation. We also do feedback forms for all the teachers. Mm -hmm. Every time a field trip comes, we send, we do an evaluation to get feedback from the teacher's perspective on how the, you know, what they would like differently next time or what things they thought they really took from that trip. And like I said before, a lot of times it's just the free play that, that they really note on it being so beneficial for their students. I love it. Um, mm -hmm. I absolutely love this. Wildrock.org. Yes. Um, they're on Facebook, although we're emphasizing getting outside <laughs> to experience Wild Rock. <laughs> they are on Facebook. Um, Wildrock.org for more information. How about this? We close on this. Each of you guys kind of like with the final word of why, and we'll start with you, Paige, why the community or children or parents or schools should get um, involved with Wild Rock. Uh, we're in a basically a health crisis right now of not going outside. It's so good, especially for children, and really for everybody to be outside every day. Um, and so that's our why. Our why is to increase um, stewardship for the, you know, in the environment, and our why is to um, increase uh, mental health, um, good mental health, and also to do that in a way that's fun and valuable to people. Um, can I shout out two events? Sure, okay. you can shout out anything. We have no rules <laughs> okay. here. Um, Seriously. So we have a Cocktails for a Cause on Thursday night. So that's this Thursday. Um, that's the 30th, right? Yes. Yeah. And uh, that's at the Graduate down um, on the UVA corner um, from 4.30 to probably like 6.30, I yes. think. You could come have a drink and we get some of the proceeds. Nice. Um, yes. Thank you for to the Graduate. Um, we also have, in a couple of weeks, on uh, February 12th, we have a terrarium, Valentine's Day terrarium building party because we love building tiny green spaces that you can put in your house. Cool. And so this would be a really fun event to bring um, your kids to. And all proceeds for the terrarium party go to our Urban Outreach Program. Um, and I just want to shout out this season's gardening company in Cardinal Hall, our amazing sponsors for that event. Um, and uh, so, and then I also just want to uh, shout out our summer camps again. We'd love to have people come out and spend time with us this summer. Um, but our why is getting people outside for their own mental health and for the good of the environment. Nice. Kat, it's about uh, your time to shine here. Jeannie Bush <laughs> says, you two have found your truest and most important calling for the children of our community. You guys rock. So does Wild Rock. She's Wild an Rock amazing truly, truly, truly rocks. Charlottesville City Schools, yes, right? Yes, an amazing retired teacher. Hi, Deanie. Yeah, she's watching right now. I see four <laughs> school systems watching yeah. as we speak. Um, final word. Anywhere you want to go? I feel like to sum it up, like Wild Rock's a really fun place to be. I mean, families come there on Saturdays, and I always see smiling. You know, sometimes it can be stressful getting the kids in the car, driving out there. Like, we understand that we're not in the most convenient location. But once you get out there, I mean, it is beautiful. There's so much to do there. Um, like Paige said, we make it accessible to everyone. So there's just all different types of limits on how far you want to go. Like, maybe you want to hike mm -hmm. the whole trail and then go over to, we're right next to Patricia Byron Park. You can go there after afterwards mm -hmm. and do some more really intense hiking yes. but we have so much to offer in the barn we're handicap accessible um so uh, i guess i would just say like 
you know, come out and see what it's like. And I think a lot of things, too, people bring from it is creating types of things that they see at Wild Rock in their own house. Like, we have a mud kitchen, and a lot of schools have come out and really liked that. I mean, mm -hmm. it's simple. It's made out of pallets. Like, you could build it at, in your own backyard. Um, so schools have been getting ideas for things that they can incorporate on their playground to make it, you know, more of, like Paige said, less of the standard metal equipment and more kind of hands-on natural materials that the kids can really interact with. So... I'd say just, you know, come see what, what it can help you with and what you find from it because everyone likes something different about it, I think. Nice. That's a good ending point. 55 mm -hmm. minutes in. You guys have <laughs> absolutely crushed it. Larissa Long Kimmel says, keep up the great, great work. Um, a lot of folks watching that are asking, where can we see the show in totality? Here's what we'll do with today's show is we'll archive it on ilovesieville.com. And for the next two weeks, our team on the second floor is going to syndicate the show across the I Love Seville network, which is 17 Facebook pages, 17 Twitter accounts. We have the third largest Instagram um, community in Central Virginia. We have an e-newsletter that goes out to 125,000 inboxes every morning at 11 a.m. And we'll take the audio and turn it into an Apple podcast by close of business today. The full show on ilovesevil.com. Thank you to Paige and Kat for coming on the show. Um, I close the program with the same message every show, and it's asking everybody to please embody the golden rule. Um, the folks that you come across in your life, if you can treat them how you want to be treated yourself, I think it's going to have an incredibly positive viral impact on our community. I feel like Charlottesville and Central Virginia and the country need the golden rule more than ever. Please just give it a thought. My name is Jerry Miller. It's the I Love Seville Show. Enjoy your afternoon. I am so impressed. Yeah, thank you for, you know.